Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. The Nobel Peace Prize winner and his drones. The recently leaked memo on the Obama administration's use of drones has shocked many and bewildered others. It begs more questions than it answers. It would appear the White House is acting as judge, jury, and executioner. Obama can kill anyone, anywhere, without any oversight or accountability. To crosstalk Obama and his drones, I'm joined by Noel Sharkey in London. He is a professor of artificial intelligence and robots at the University of Sheffield and chairman of the International Committee for Robot Arms Control. In Charlottesville, we have David Swanson. He is an author and radio host who works for RootsAction.org. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage it. Uh, Noel, we've been told that Obama's drone policy is, and I will quote, legal, ethical, and wise. Do you agree with that? Yes, that's that's extraordinary. Uh, I don't extraordinary. think so. No, <clears throat> I think that is quite extraordinary. But I think I don't think that he can kill anybody anywhere at any time either. I think that was a slight exaggeration. Uh, but he can kill anybody who's classified as being Al Qaeda or any associated force. So I don't think he would come and kill well, you, for if, instance. Well, if, if I but he might if I talk to somebody in Al Qaeda, I could be called an associate. Okay, I don't think it is an exaggeration. That's true. Yes, that's true. Okay, David. That, that is true. Uh, but it, they'd have to have some sort of motivation, but I don't think a lot. Do I'd they be need, more concerned do about they need motivation? The I read the memo very carefully. Do <clears throat> they? I mean, and how do you define it? I mean, it's so vague. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a defender of Obama. I was just saying that I think it's a slight exaggeration, but I think that my concern really is the, and we have to be very careful when we're talking to the public about the drone policy, because there's one kind of drone used by conventional forces for force protection, and really what I object to is the use by the CIA uh, to invade and attack countries that the United States is not at war with. And I can't see the legal justification for this. They argue a lot about Article 51, which is that the idea that somebody has a you know as an imminent threat and I don't think that some foot soldier loading a couple of imminent. rifles onto a, a truck in the Yemen is much of a threat imminent threat okay David I think your summary was actually an understatement, not an exaggeration. I mean, this was a white paper summarizing a memo that takes it uh, as beyond question that non-Americans can be killed with drones anywhere and seeks to justify the killing of U.S. citizens uh, if they are abroad and even if they are not in a hostile field of activity, uh, although it seems rather uh, an action and rather a hostile one to kill them, if you ask me. And so they're taking it as... Uh, beyond question that they can kill Americans if they are in those other areas. Uh, the only place where they won't kill someone is an American within the United States, uh, and that may be coming. Uh, but this is, a, this is a memo that says not just the president, uh, but any high, high official. official, and it doesn't explain which high officials or what happens if two of them disagree, but any high official uh, can, can kill a U.S. citizen in these circumstances when that citizen uh, is an imminent threat to the United States, meaning U.S. troops anywhere, uh, imminent meaning eventual, imminent being defined to mean nothing whatsoever, uh, and and, and is a, uh, a senior operations uh, official in Al Qaeda or some aligned organization, which none of the three Americans that we know to have been killed by this program remotely qualify as. You know, the, this is a program that was used to kill a 16 year old American citizen and his teenage cousin who had the bad luck to be next to him. Uh, and no one has remotely made any claims that he or his father, who was killed earlier and was on the list. Uh, before anyone had suggested anything of the sort. Uh, the, the three Americans we know to have been killed don't meet the qualifications. So this is a, this is a paper to quote unquote legalize killing some other Americans. No, you're agreeing. Okay, because, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with them, but I was going to, I was going to say that um, when I read the memo again, it seemed to me that I, I agree entirely with what David just said. I, I read the memo as meaning that uh, uh, imminent threat means someone that a high official decides is an imminent threat, and that's what imminent means in this circumstance. Well, does that make any sense to you? 
It makes no sense to me whatsoever. I mean, the document really, I, I was just saying that I didn't think it would kill me, but the document to me was <laughs> well, giving don't, don't count the United on it, States okay? You've right been on this program, okay? Don't count on it, okay? <laughs> Okay. Well, I uh, thank you. I feel much more comfortable now on the way home on the train. I'm not going to say which train I'm getting home, though. Um, but I, I think that the idea of this continuous warfare, it started off with George Bush declaring war on terror. And most of the rest, most of Europe thought this guy was an idiot. What's he talking about declaring war on terror? But it actually had legal implications when you read the White House documents. It meant that anybody who's associated with a, an insurgent, a non-combatant, you know, combatant without uniform, organization is a fair target throughout the entire world so now we've got very many dangerous precedents being set up but my worry is is in terms of the technology not internal within the United States because I've tracked 76 countries now that are, have got the technology and we're setting up extremely dangerous precedents here I mean what are we going to say when China decide that India isn't doing anything about the Dalai Lama so they fly a drone over and kill him what can we say then we can't take the moral high ground for sure. Okay, David, one of the things that really bothers me, you mentioned that 16-year-old boy. Oops, but who's accountable for it? He was murdered. No one's held accountable. Well, you know, if, if I'm charged with murder here in a U.S. court, I can't say, Your Honor, it's all right, I've written a memo to legalize it. <laughs> uh, but that seems to be the understanding that is now pervading the U.S. media. Uh, here is a program that we've known about for years. We've known that men, women, and children were on the lists for years. We've known uh, that Americans had been targeted and killed. We've known that there were hundreds of civilian deaths and non-targeted individual deaths, and uh, no one charged with a crime. We've known that they've been doing double taps where they target rescuers of victims, that they've been targeting people without so much as knowing their name. Uh, and it's not just the U.S. government that's lost the moral high ground. It's the U.S. public. I, I saw a poll today that said that 83% uh, of Americans are okay with the president doing this uh, to non-Americans. Uh, but when it comes to U.S. citizens, Ooh. only 24% say it's okay. So you do the math. What percentage of Americans are bigots? Uh, because there is a clear double standard here on who it's okay to kill. And I think that 24% would go up if a lot of people knew that President Obama already was killing Americans because they don't want to oppose something that's being done. I think it would go down if people knew who those Americans were, uh, the lack of any charge or evidence against them, the manner in which they were killed and so forth. But uh, moral high ground is the furthest thing from uh, within our reach right now. You know, no, it's very interesting. David brought up, and I noticed this when we were get preparing for this program, is that Americans get upset when Americans are being killed. But when it's not Americans, they don't particularly care anymore do they or ever um, I don't I wouldn't say it of all Americans I mean surveys are surveys I, I certainly my friends in America are very concerned and well of course most of the people I mix with in America are actually campaigners against this or the human rights lawyers um, but one of the tricks that have been pulled here that I don't like and and it's been quite clear from the UN talk which is that they're calling this uh, a, a war on terror means that you're now applying international humanitarian law and yeah. that might be the wrong law and many human rights lawyers will say to me that this is really human rights law and under human rights law you've got civilians i.e. the CIA and who knows who's actually flying the drones is it civilian contractors or what we don't know um, so in, under humanitarian law they're actually committing murder okay. you know, so it's not even yeah. about collateral it's committing murder you know, David, are we rewriting international law or just throwing it out? At least America. Uh, well, these operations these operations are considered war when they want to talk about how it is somehow legal to murder individuals uh, but they're described as not war when they want to talk about how it's absolutely unnecessary to get the informed consent or the authorization of the Congress uh, to get the authorization of the United Nations to yes. join in these operations only in nations uh, with which the United States is at war so it's it, they're trying to have it both ways um, you know under the Kellogg-Briand 
compact under a certain interpretation of the U.S. Constitution, uh, under the United Nations Charter in most cases, war itself is a crime. Uh, and so calling it war shouldn't be an argument to excuse murder. Uh, but I think Noel is exactly right, uh, that they're also talking about it in terms of, at least rhetorically, they talk about it in terms of, of criminal justice. Uh, we're unable to capture this individual. This individual is committing a crime. We therefore are going to murder him and or her and anyone nearby. Uh, and, and it's talked about as if it were criminal justice. But this is an operation out of the White House without judicial oversight, without legislative oversight, without public public input without compliance with international treaties or bodies. Uh, I mean, this is absolute lawlessness. Uh, and the fact that, you know, a memo, you know, a, a, an absolutely absurd memo is, is now being presented to a handful yeah. of uh, representatives and senators, but not to the U.S. public, that that should make it okay with us uh, is, is an outrage. This is a, this is a White House that made public some of the more laughable memos from the previous administration. <laughs> okay, straight, you know, what about these ones? No, it's, it, it looks like the Obama administration is just saying, trust us. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, well, actually, Harold, Harold Coe, the chief lawyer for the Obama administration, when there was a, there was a bit of a, a, an argument in the UN in 2010 when Philip Alston, who's the special extrajudicial special rapporteur for extrajudicial killings from New York University, and he stood up and said he needed to know there would need to be more transparency about how the United States was choosing the targets for these covert operations. He was essentially told to mind his own business, and he came back in November 2010 with a 30-page report explaining explaining exactly in what way okay, no, the hold, hold that States thought. Hold that thought. We're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on drones. Welcome back to Cross Stay with where all things are considered. To remind you, we're discussing Obama's drone policy. Okay, David, if I can go back to you, you know, it, it, part of the memo talks about the inability to catch people, okay? I sense that they don't want to catch these people. They want to kill them, there's, so there's no trial. They don't have to show any proof, no evidence. It's very cynical. You know, my suspicion from the moment that they announced, uh, you know, they leaked the, the, the chosen classified information that they'd killed Osama bin Laden, I suspected that the order had been to kill, not to capture. And we later learned it, it became quite clear that that, in fact, had been the order. Uh, and that, uh, as far as we know, that is likely the order in many such cases. We have these raids happening every night. They don't all involve Osama bin Laden. Uh, and the, the thinking uh, that we're here in the U.S. media and, and out of the, the Obama administration uh, is that it is more legal to kill people uh, than it is to capture them and torture them, as if, as if <laughs> captives must be tortured, as if these are our options. Uh, and, and so drones are an improvement on torture. Drones are an improvement oh on God. ground war. These are the God. arguments we're being given. Uh, and yet we didn't have a ground war in Yemen. We might need one eventually after, with the damage the drone strikes are doing. Uh, but th this is be we're being told that this type of murder is better than other human rights abuses. Noel, would you like to respond to that? It sounds bizarre, but true. No, I mean, I, 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 we've, got no, we've got no disagreement at all here. I, I'm in complete agreement with what David's saying. And it's quite clear that it's quite horrific in, in Africa. But it's getting worse. I mean, there's a new, new drone base now uh, in Niger, close to Mali, uh, so that you've got the west of Africa now as well. And so it's, it's stroking up so that we're going to have drone bases all over Africa. And I'm not sure what it's about, really. This is what's getting me. Why are we doing this? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's the drones cheaper. are supposed to it's be the most, cheaper. They're the most okay. effective recruitment tool for insurgents in the world. David, what do you think about that? Recruitment. Blowback. Uh, I got to agree with Noel as he agrees with me. I, I think that, that this is an operation that is part of a war on terrorism that is boosting terrorism. And if you look at the opinions in Pakistan and Yemen uh, of the U.S. government uh, and the blame that's being placed on these drone strikes, uh, the reputation of the United States uh, sinking further, if that's possible, with a U.N. investigation uh, of these drone wars or drone murders as crimes. 
Uh, I mean, the, there are several bases uh, in Africa. Uh, that there's been no, we've known for quite some time that there was this base in Saudi Arabia. We didn't know exactly where. Uh, the Washington Post is furious at the New York Times for having identified the location of the base in Saudi Arabia uh, because there was an informal arrangement not to. What else have they informally arranged not to tell us? And what have they formally arranged not to tell us? Uh, and why? Uh, because these are policies that the American public would begin to oppose if they understood them better, uh, and the rest of the world uh, is out ahead of us. These are not operations that are making us more safe. Okay, you know, talk about a due process. What's happening with due process? That's a pillar of Western civilization. It's been thrown away, essentially. Well, I, I would... Uh, wow, that's, well, that, that's put it in a few words there, David. Go ahead, jump in. Uh, I, I missed Noel's comment. I'm sure I agreed with it. But, uh, you know, I think the television comedian in the United States, Stephen Colbert, got it right when he said the new due process is just whatever process they do. Uh, because according to Attorney General Eric Holder, uh, there is no... Uh, right to a legal process. There is no right to a judicial process. There is only a right to some sort of process. So as long as three guys get together in the White House and talk about something, that counts as your due process. Uh, these are rights that should not just belong to U.S. citizens and are now being stripped away from them. They should belong to human beings. Uh, and there is clearly no legitimate process in the president assigning some subordinate to secretly decide that uh, an individual needs to be killed uh, and to decide that there is no means of capture. Who, who is to justify that? Who, who is to uh, legitimate that claim that there was no possible means of capture? We know uh, of a teenage boy in Pakistan attending a, uh, uh, a meeting where he was trained to use a video camera to go and film footage of drone victims. He, he was downtown in the city there available to be captured uh, left town went to the to the area in the north of the country where the drones had been hitting and he was targeted and struck and killed with a drone uh, are you gonna tell me he couldn't have been captured no it, it seems to me that they, they yes, want... I know the case of that boy what about Gitmo that, that they want to get rid of Gitmo so if you don't have any prisoners you don't have any problem I mean Obama sounds like Stalin no people no problem my, my words. Well, okay. he's had a lot of problems with Guantanamo Bay, and the, certainly uh, when, when the, uh, the recent killing, the, so there was a recent prosecution from the Yemen of a man who had just been released from prison, and two weeks later he was killed in a drone strike, and his brother is trying to sue the United States because he said he could have been captured quite easily. And an informant uh, from the DOD said that... Um, he said it was too difficult to capture people now. They didn't trust the Yemen security and they couldn't bring them to the United States because it was worse to bring them to Guantanamo Bay and torture them, as uh, David previously said. You know, David, we know that uh, prisoners at Gitmo, they were mistakenly put there, okay? So drones can make mistakes too. Well, in fact, the majority of the, the prisoners that have been held at Guantanamo and labeled the worst of the worst uh, have been exonerated and uh, released, uh, and others have been exonerated and cleared for release but not yet released. Uh, and there is absolutely no reason to believe that the level of so-called intelligence has improved dramatically uh, between those captures and these kills. Uh, in fact, the temptation uh, is so much greater to kill someone with less evidence, uh, in, in fact, in many cases, no evidence, uh, because you do not then have to have a trial or a military commission pretense of a trial. Uh, it is much cleaner, as the phrasing goes, within the CIA. Uh, and, and so I think the, the lesson to be learned from Guantanamo is a, is a very, very important one right now. Okay. You know, what kind of message is the United States sending the world? Well, it's not a good message at all. I mean, some people really approve of it and some people don't really care less and there's a lot of confusion about it. But certainly I find in Europe that there's a lot of dissent, a lot of complaint about it, about what the United States is doing, well, what the CIA is doing. And I think as one of my real worries really is 
what's going on in the United States now? There seems to be a change in presidential powers, and they, they seem to be not, you know, they seem to be limitless at the moment. Uh, and one example was in the Libyan war, if you want to call it a war, when, when the Libyan, when uh, Obama sent drones into Libya, and uh, he didn't go back to Congress right. after 60 days as he should have done under the War Powers Resolution. And Harold Coe, his chief lawyer, said, well, there was no commitment to American troops on the ground, so we didn't need to. Does this mean the president can just go off killing people, go to war, war powers resolution, all those sort of constraints that are in the president are just going to be thrown away now? I don't understand it as a foreigner. David, do we have the imperial presidency now? What Nixon always wanted? Clearly we do. The war powers resolution that was put in place in response to the abuses and the secret war making of President Nixon uh, tried to encompass all military activity with the language wars or other hostilities. Uh, and we had Harold Coe, as, as Noel mentioned, going before the United States Congress and arguing that bombing Libya would be neither war nor hostilities. So these are non-hostile bombs falling on a city. Uh, the idea being that unless significant <laughs> significant numbers of U.S. troops are on the ground, it's not hostile, it's not a war, it's something else. Uh, that, needs to be, uh, that needs to be addressed uh, before someone like John Brennan uh, is, is given a promotion to head the CIA. But, da I mean, but David, are, do you see any uh, dissent? These are do, weapons do being used. David, do you see any dissent, though, in, in the corridors of power? Well, I, in the... A, a couple of years ago, uh, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, for whom I once worked, uh, introduced a mm -hmm. bill to ban what is by definition banned, namely extrajudicial killings, uh, and he managed to get six co-sponsors out of his 434 colleagues in the House. Uh, and and I, a lot of that, the problem there is, uh, is, is the lack of resistance by the U.S. public, which is so poorly and, and ill-informed. Uh, but with but with these memos coming out and with this nomination of John Brennan, you're beginning to see a handful of House members and senators uh, resisting drones uh, and resisting the drone kill program. And at the same time, you're seeing pressure from below from cities and states uh, and, and groups on the right and the left in the United States <coughs> to the growing use of drones within the United States. Uh, and, and so that you're seeing that topic raised uh, in Congress and that helping somewhat to open up this discussion but uh, I would hardly call it uh, opposition or resistance at this point you know it, no it looks like you know Bush's no, go ahead but Bush's administra uh, foreign policy has been codified now um, we don't see a change it's just getting worse um, it's got much worse. I mean, strikes under Obama have been much, much greater. I think Kucinich was a really, was a good guy in terms of this, but he didn't get re-elected. But I believe that 11 senators signed a letter today. But 11's not very many, really. Uh, there's not enough opposition. So I think that we could be, the United States could be painting itself into a lot of problems for the future. And again, as I say, other countries have got this technology. They're developing it really rapidly. And when, when countries are attacking places that the United States have interests in, I don't know what's going to be said, whether wars will actually be triggered or what. Okay, David, I'll give you the last word in the program. You know, other countries could get these weapons, and relatively well. soon. Uh, many, many countries have got them and are beginning to use them, and that disturbs uh, Americans in their xenophobia and their exceptionalism, uh, and that may help to change the debate. I certainly hope so. Kucinich was not unelected. He was redistricted out. Uh, All right, gentlemen, we've run, run out of time. Just Fascinating discussion. Many thanks today to my guests in London and in Charlottesville, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time, and remember, Crosstalk Rules. I'm sorry, I'm sorry.